But he's gonna be wet, but for a stone of stumbling, but to the two third, his same words are gonna be a stone of stumbling, go ahead. And for a rock of offense. And a rock of offense. So if he's gonna if he gives you the understanding of his words, you're gonna accept it and you're gonna be part of the sanctuary. But if he gives you the word without the understanding, he knows that's gonna offend you and you're gonna buck against it and not being able to have belief and faith in the word. You see that? That's what he does. That's balance. The, the, the two thirds are gonna be offended, but the elect are gonna accept it. That's what that's how you have Shah set up. Go ahead. But for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense right. to both the houses of Israel. Right. For a gin and for a snare right. to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Right, because if you how you know that because think about it he says with the lack of understanding those these scriptures become a gin and a snare to you why because you have to believe that Cornelius is an Israelite or you ain't gonna make it because if you don't believe he's an Israelite that means you believe he's an Edomite or he's a, or of the other nations and then that means you believe that the Lord is saving the men of the other nation meaning the heathens and that is against the doctrine Nobody that believes that Cornelius was a heathen is going into the ships. Because if you believe that, that means you also believe that a bunch of Hamites and Moabites and Edomites are coming in the ships with you. And that's not gonna happen. So if the Lord doesn't give you that understanding, then all of a sudden it becomes a stand a trap to make sure you stay right here in America when the missiles come. All right? Now get that on Peters that I want. Well, actually, no, no, keep reading on there. This is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 15. Right. And many among them shall stumble and fall. Many are going to stumble and fall. What? Right? And be broken, and be snared, and be taken. And be snared and be taken. What? Right? Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. There you go. So that's what it is. Isaiah, through the Spirit, bind up the testimony and seal, seal the law to my disciples. Who are the disciples? The elect. So it's bonded. A, a lot of these men... See, Jake doesn't understand, man. Like, Jake fears, Jake fears these other magical books. You know, these these books like Morals and Dogma, these, uh, what's that, what's that, 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 um, these, these uh, witch Egyptian games or witchcraft, Egyptian book, hey, uh, what's that, all that, that, that Ouija boards, you know, books that go into Wicca and witchcraft. Jake, uh, Jake would be afraid to open that book. Cause he afraid that the shit that could come out of there can fuck with his man. But Jake doesn't understand. This book is even more magic. Good God. You can't just open up this book and play around with it, man. Because the spirits that come out of these wicked books that can destroy your mind, the righteous spirit that comes out of this book can also destroy your mind. So it's amazing how Jake will play around with the book of the yeah, Lord, yeah, yeah. but be afraid of yeah. Satan's books out here. Right, yeah. Ain't that something? Right. They forget the spiritual essence. The Lord said to the prophet, seal and bind the testimony. You know what he did? He prayed. Just like when these people in witchcraft. You know what they do to these books? No, they conjure up demons. Because if they seal books, how do you seal a book? It's through prayer. So the Lord says, seal the book so that men regular average men wouldn't be able to understand. So this is nothing to play with, man. Yeah. Unless the Holy Spirit is in you to unseal this book, you have no business preaching this book, even reading this book, right? Or it's gonna mess you up, man. Right? Yeah. That's what we're trying to tell them. But they don't fear the Lord, so therefore they don't fear his book. All right? That's right, all right? Keep going. This is uh, Isaiah chapter eight, Verse 17. Right. And I will wait upon the Most High Yahweh that hideth his face from the house of Jacob. Right. And I will look for him. Right. Behold, I and the children whom the Most High Yahweh have given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Right. From the Most High Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Keep on. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have what familiar. Verse, is that? Uh, verse 19 now. All right, jump down to 20. This is verse 20, to the law and to the well, test. No, 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 read 19, okay. read 19 and 20. Uh, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, right. and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, right. should not a people seek unto their power? There you go. Everybody, that's what I'm saying, everybody has got their power. They got their, their priest. You go to the hermetic villages, guess what they got? 
they got their gods and they got the, the priest, right? They call him a priest, a, a, a sh shaman, whatever. They are, they got that. That whole setup comes from, comes from Israel. So you need to understand that. So when they want understanding, guess who they go? They go to the shaman, the priest, the witch doctor, so he can tell them what the hell is going on. Why is the God is not happy? You know, they know to, to do that. But the Lord is saying, how come my people don't want to do that to me? When I set up this whole process, God. I set up the men, I set up this, my son, I set up the prophets, who you got to go to to hear my words. But my people don't want to follow that. But he looks around, but the heathens are following the setup. You see that? That's why the Lord is upset, right? What? For the living to the dead, verse 20, to the law and to the testimony. Right. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. There is no light in them. That same light, remember that same light going back to the human and the thumb? That light that shines into your stone to make you a living stone? That uh, the light represents what? What's the light? Ecclesiastes 8 1. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 1. Whoops. Yeah, then eight. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 1. Who is as the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? Right. A wise man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. There you go. A wise man's wisdom maketh, maketh his face to shine. All right. So it's that it's that that light. Go ahead. Yeah, that's it on that, right? That should be it on there. Yeah, but because how does it shine? How does your face shine? Remember that face shining is not really. I mean, you can say it, but I know, I know we've used that, but ultimately it goes deeper than just your face. You know shining and what with bright light because remember what a face is you know what a face is right now when you go back to the word face the word face goes back to the um the hebrew if i'm not mistaken was it tazalam the, the image the word tazalam and uh, was it face or image that's uh if image. I'm face is punya right right but uh tazalam is image yeah, yeah, yeah. right now the word face which is punya the word face also goes back to the word image Right? Now, when you look up the word, when you look up image, it says what? You remember? Image is, um, um, oh, what's that? Um, you got image? I mean, I like, no, but, but this time I don't want to use idea. Look up the word image. Because we got to get the full understanding, you know? If, I, if we say, it'd be like, well, hey, brother, we, you know we got the understanding because you can see the light shining out of our faces. Come on, man. Come on, man. I, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, so you gotta get the proper understanding of what it means of your face is shining, that, that light that shines in your face. It's not talking about, you know, me standing here, you can't even look at me because you're close. Now, with Moses, with Moses, it actually happened. Like Moses' face and his whole body, because when he was up there, you know, the fasting and praying, he was among spiritual beings, the angels and all that, his body, was amongst that purity, so his face literally shone so bright, people had a hard time looking. But remember, everything that was that was shown physically back then has a spiritual representation wow. now. So now we're not looking for a brother whose face is shining to be like, oh, that's the brother who's got the truth. That's not what it means. What up, the, uh, the word image? So the word image means a representation right. that looks like a person or thing. Right image meaning a likeness figure and likeness and, and what does the scripture say um what's that on uh, colossians it speaks about the um the image of uh, yahweh uh, which is a, yeah yeah bring that up bring that up. yeah bring the scriptures about the image yes there's many of them because we need to understand what it means to, to for your face when you have that light that makes your face shine it's not talking about your, your physical features it's not talking about that you need to understand what the face is. The face goes back to the image. Actually, look up the word face. Go to Adam Online, right quick, brother. Go to Adam Online and put on put in the word face. Cause it says that the yeah, wisdom, huh? What comes up? It says a likeness image. There you go. He's there. You go. So when the scripture says that the wisdom make a, a man's face to shine, but by light, it's not talking about your physical appearance shining. It's talking about, that face is talking about the image. Going back at confusion of faces, when you get to the proper breakdown of confusion of faces, 
It's not talking about brothers physically looking. That face and image is talking about what? Your belief. What did the scripture say? Let your light therefore shine. Did the Lord say show up into the highways and the edges and blind people? But with the light that's coming out of your face? <laughs> no. He's saying, let the image of your house shine. Shine through you uh -huh. so that people will see that. Uh -huh. And that that's true wisdom. Let's get, 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 get what you got. Oh, this is Genesis 1 and 26. What? And the power said, let us make man in our image. Let us make our likeness. That, that means, let us make man according to our face. Yeah. Because the word face goes back to image. So when you see that scripture again, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 1. Bring that up one more time. Come this is Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 1. Go ahead. Who is as wait a minute? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It, that's it. Who is as the wise man? Right. And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? And who knoweth it? Because that's what it goes back to. That wisdom that shines upon your face is knowing the interpretation of this thing called the scriptures, man. That's what shines. It's not an actual physical light that blinds people. Go ahead. A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. A man's wisdom maketh his face or his image. His belief, when he comes out in the highways and the edges and professes his belief, when he lives according to his belief, that's what's showing. That's what's showing that he's shining. Okay. Now bring that. That's it on that. Now. No, no, you ain't read that. Bring your piece of that. Colossians one and thirteen. Uh, God, Who God, have God. delivered us from the power of darkness, right? And have translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. That's right. In whom. We have redemption through his blood, right? Even the forgiveness of sins. That's right. Who is the image of the invisible power? And there you go. Who is the image of the invisible power? And aren't we supposed to be like Yahweh Shah? We supposed to be as the as, as Yahweh Shah. As means likeness. We're supposed to be like likened unto Yahweh Shah. So and Yahweh Shah is the image of the invisible power. Go ahead. The firstborn of every creature. The firstborn of every creature. So we, so us, we shine because what? We're following after the footsteps of what? The first, the first of the first fruits. You know, I even made a video about that. You know how the elect follow into the footsteps of the first, because the scripture calls them the first. Everything that Yahweh Shah did, if you sit back and, and, and analyze and, and, and meditate, we're doing the same thing. When Yahweh Shah you, you came in, Yahweh Shah was resurrected. Yahweh Shah was, re was resurrected from the dead. Well, actually, Yahweh Shah had to die. You know, he had to come in in a humble manner, which we come in in a humble manner. Yahweh Shah had to die. You know what I'm saying? Which we died, but we died spiritually. Yahweh Shah was raised from the dead, right? He was raised from the dead physically. We, right now, are being raised from the dead spiritually. Right. Yahweh Shah, after being raised from the dead, what happened? He got delivered into the ship. Remember that? He got delivered into the ship right after he was delivered, he, right after he was resurrected from the dead. So we've been resurrected from the dead right now. So what's going to happen to us next? We're going to be in the ships. Now, after Yahweh Shah got into the ships, of course he got the perfect, you know, the glory, he got the crown and everything. So he's coming back from the ship. What is he going to do? He's going to bring destruction and salvation. We're going to go into those ships. When we come down from those ships, what you think we're going to do? <laughs> Destruction. Destruction and salvation. So, he do everything he's doing, we right behind him. We right behind him, exactly the same thing. That's what it means to be in, you know, part of the first, who's following after the first, following after Yahweh's ship. What's that? Yeah, bring it up. Uh, this is the book of, uh, of uh, Romans, chapter, chapter 6, verse 4. It says, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Hamashiach was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, right. even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, there you go, the we, likeness con, it right. says, image. Con, we shall we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. That's right, because that's what it is. You know, the resurrection, the resurrection of Yahweh Shah from the dead, the physical resurrection, we was going to do the same thing, but it was going to be spiritual. Like you said, the valley of the dry bones. The scripture said, a man that I uh, wonder if out of, the con out of the wisdom or out of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. 
So right now we're being resurrected from the dead. We're alive now. So the next stage is what? It's deliverance. And then after deliverance, we get glory, which is the, the crown. We get into the ship, we get the body. When we come down from the chariots, we're coming down to judge the world, man. All right, we're gonna destroy our, our enemies, right? The Israelites, other Israelites across the wind, the four winds, they're gonna be brought in. The scripture tells you that, right? Isaiah 14, and the strangers shall cleave unto them. So we're gonna be salvation to the other strangers, Israelites. They're gonna cleave unto us from across the world. The, the rest of the nations, they're gonna be captive as we were their captives. You see that? So everything Yahweh is doing, we're gonna do the same thing. And what did he say in John? The things that, that I have done, ye shall do greater. You know why? Because there's many of us. There's many of us. Yahweh shall heal one person. If we, if each and every one of us heals one person, if that's a thousand, that's a thousand healed. Think about that. Yahweh shall heals one person, a thousand brothers heal, one thousand a, 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 a person, that's a thousand. Which a thousand is greater than what? So that's why Yahweh Shah said, what I've done, you're going to do greater. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, it's a little bit more. It says, knowing, it's knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. That's right. The body of sin is talking about his flesh and the mindset, and the mindset that comes with the flesh. You know, because the scripture speaks about this, the mind of the spirit and the mind of the flesh. This flesh has got its own shit going on, man. That's the reason why you're constantly fighting in your mind. You know what I'm saying? Because this flesh is doing its own thing. That's why we want to get rid of this thing, man. Uh, All right? Oh, Job, um, Job 11 and, I think it's 11 and, hey, 11 and 10 or 10 and 11? Damn, we gotta run it. But finish that precept. That was a precept, bro? Um, it's a tough one. It says, um, uh, you offense me in, in, in bodies and sinews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Job 10 verse 11. Huh? It says, um, Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh. Now, this is Job speaking. This is how he refers to this flesh. He said, You have, you have, thou, the Most High, has clothed me with skin and flesh. So he letting you know that Job is not his flesh. Mm -hmm. He is his spirit. The spirit that's in the flesh. Go ahead. And has fenced me with bones and sinews. So he called bones and sinews. Fences. You know what a fence is, right? It's a gate. It's a prison. So Job is telling you, you put me in a fucking prison, man. Read that again from the top. It says, Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh, right? And has fenced me with bones and sinews. And has fenced me with bones and sinews. Everybody wants to get out of what? Jail. <laughs> and that's what we want to do. We want to get out of jail. This is jail. This is a fence. Alright? And that's why we want we wait for Yahweh Shah because Yahweh Shah, he's already delivered our mind. Now he just got delivered the spirit from this body. You know, and you got guys fighting, they don't understand the salvation of Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah is not coming down to save the spirit and the flesh. Yahweh Shah is coming down to save the spirit. Whether you die, you know, if you get, you know, you get the guillotine, it's still your body is gonna be separated from your spirit. When you go into this chariots, your body is going to be separated from your what, from your spirit. Either way, the flesh is not going anywhere. That's why we're not worried about this flesh. It's about salvation of the spirit. When uh, when Elijah was taken up, that's right. It, it, it was read that um, that Elisha, every like his cloak, his mantle, everything fell down, and uh, Elisha put it on. That's so, right. Uh, walk with so you don't take you don't take none of this stuff. Hey. Hey. That's right. Go ahead, baby. This is Romans 7, verse 24. O wretched man that I am, That's right. who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Mm. I thank the Most High through Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of the Most High, mm -hmm. but with the flesh, the law of sin. That's right. Basically, cover what you talked about. That's right. That's what it is. I mean, that's the, the battle. Of yeah, that's the battle that we do doing because, like I said, the flesh is a, what's it, uh, autonomous. That's the word. Uh, autonomy, autonomy means doing your own thing under your own rule. Right, so the flesh is operating on autonomy, which is not true autonomy because the flesh is ruled by, by the, the flesh is influenced by angels on the left hand side, while the spirit is influenced by angels on the right hand side. So you got that battle going on, man. So if your spirit is right, your spirit is going to follow after the influence 
of what? Of the angels, and the angels influence your spirit through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashim El Shah. So these are intricate details that you need to know. So, so when you go off, you won't feel like, hey man, I'm a fucking demon because I went on, no, 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 no. You might have had, you might have had, you had demons on you, especially on your flesh, that influence your flesh to go off. But it doesn't mean that you were with that. And that's what Paul tried to convey to Israel in Romans 7 chapter. Because if you don't, you're gonna let your sins bury you, man. You're gonna let your sin. Once you believe that that these things that you've done is who you are, then you already saying, yeah, man, I'm I'm all Satan. Ain't no, ain't no hope for me. Can't lose hope, man. Right. Now this is Galatians 5 and 17. It says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, right. and the spirit against the flesh. That's right. And these are contrary uh, the one to the to the other. That's right. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. That's right. Now let's let's wrap up with um 2 Peter chapter 2 started one. That's why you can't understand the Lord's way. You know, people try to yeah. it, it makes them get confused about why the Lord would do it, but it's the perfect balance, it's the setup. He, he set it up like that so that we have to depend on Yahweh Shah. You know, that's the only way. That's the only way to get through the battle is just to depend on Yahweh Shah. If you depend on the law, you know, if it were down to the law, you'd just be put to death. You know, we don't have any priests. We don't have the priests of the Yerim and the Therm like we were going into. So by default, you got to rely on the scapegoat. You know, which is Yahweh Shah. That's right. Yeah, he is the scapegoat. Remember, we went into that. Remember, you brothers remember? That's that good, that's let loose. That's, that's right, you, you brothers remember? That when we, the, uh, the, the whole term um, scapegoat, you know where that goes back to, right? It's somebody who takes the fall. Right? right, but you know where it goes back to the scriptures, it goes back to the law. Yeah. Remember, yeah. the law of actually uh, releasing the goat into the wilderness for the sins of Israel? That's actually a law, that's what the priests would do. They would release the, the, uh, a goat into the wilderness, right, to cover the sins of Israel. That, that's where you get the term scapegoat. Because instead of you paying for your sins, that goat would be a release out there. That was a... Uh, 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 what was it? Release of sacrifice. Right, right, release of sacrifice. That's what you get that term scapegoat, okay? The priest had two goats. That's right. One was released and one was one was put on the altar. That's right. And Yahweh Shah covered both. Because Yahweh Shah was released into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And he was also put on the altar as a sacrifice. That's why there's no need for us to sacrifice and you know and uh, 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 animal sacrifice. There's no need for that. Can we say this real quick? Right, but you had said this earlier. You was talking. You was hopping on. Uh, you was hopping on uh, the priesthood and the Ernum Thurman. You know the whole the whole the whole nine yards. Uh, was shy. And you talked about how. Uh, how uh, we didn't know our registry and stuff like that. Yeah, how was Shai clean the whole house up? He's the one that cleaned these things up. This is why it talks about Mount Chesedek, not under the order of, of the Levite priest, but the order of Mount Chesedek, which gives us the, the everlasting life, like he was. So, so Yahweh Shai was that representation of, of, of cleaning up the house of Israel, and, and the, now the registry is the elect. You see, now we do know uh, who, like, like we read in Romans 8, 16, now we know who the elector, we know who uh, uh, the priests are, right? We know who the ones are now. So Yahweh Shah is the one who cleaned the whole house of Israel up. So we now have a way to everlasting life. Okay. You know? I mean, we, we, I, I mean, we have, we have hope. That's right. Now we have hope and the knowledge that, that we are those men. Yeah. yeah. I don't want we can't wait. I don't want that because we can't say no. we. No, no, no. I don't, don't want right. that. Yeah. That. We have we have hope because scripture said a man shall uh, the just shall live by, by hope. So so we have hope that according to the scriptures and according to the deeds of of that the elect is supposed to have, we have hope that we are those men. You know what I'm saying? So and that's what it is. That's right. That's what it is. That's right. and like the brother said, that's because of your house chef. You know, he showed us the way. Now, what did I, um, oh yeah, that's another thing too. Because they had a, uh, what's that, uh, let me get on uh, uh, Job, please, Job 19 and 20. Did you know they got a, that's another thing they also have in the world, right? They got a saying, um, I'm escaped by the, uh, uh, he escaped by the skin of his teeth. They don't even know, that goes back to the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of, yo, that's why it all starts with the scriptures, man. 
You got these people out here acting like geniuses. Oh, I came up with this and I came up with that. You're like, well, man, that's in the scriptures. You got it? This is Job chapter 19, <laughs> verse 20. Right. My bone cleaveth to my skin. My bone cleaveth to my skin. And to my flesh. Right. And I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. There you go. <laughs> so now you know where that statement comes from. But they didn't make this up. It starts with the Lord, man. Hey, cause I mean, cause think about it. What is the skin of your teeth? Like physically, there's no really, you know, cause your, your teeth don't have. But it's a, it's symbolic for what? For just making a cut. Why? Because that's what's gonna happen when he's throwing when nuclear missiles hit him up. We just gonna. I mean, the scripture said the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Yeah, yeah. And we just gonna make the cut, man. That's what you want. That's what you want to do. You want to make that that. I even made a video about that. Yo, you want to make the ultimate wasp. You know, because we're in it, you know, like this NFL season, you know, in the world. So, so you know, in, in preseason, brothers that watch football in preseason, you have the preseason uh, a roster. It's like 80 guys, yeah. but you gotta you gotta cut that down to 56 Woo. for the regular season. Woo. And only 12, only 11, well, only 22 get to make the starting lineup. So you gotta make these cuts. You gotta make these cuts. You know what I'm saying? The reason why I use that is because just like Paul, Paul used. Um, um, the Olympics in the scriptures to convey the truth to um, there's like foreigners that's why when he said you run this race I run not as one that beat up the air because the top uh, um, uh, athletic competition in, in Greece especially in corn was racing it was a marathon you know just like they have the marathon and the sprints these things go all the way back to ancient Greece that's right fighting and also the fighting because they also had the fighting they also had boxes Although back then, hit box with pink cats, gloves, wrestling. You also have wrestling. So, so you have all these um, uh, uh, sports, act, you know, uh, 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 athletic competition going on. And, and Paul knew that our people was heavily involved into that. Right? Uh, one, uh, 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 Timothy's father. Now, I don't have, but I know in the spirit, because of corn and what was going on in corn and, and those sports, you know he was into that shit. You know, see, he was heavy into that stuff. So he didn't want nothing to do with it, with, with being an Islam. So how do you how did you speak to people like that? You use the stuff that was going on. So right now the ultimate roster is what? It's the election. And especially the starting lineup is 144,000. You want to make that, you know what I'm saying? You want to make that starting lineup, you know, 12,000 for each draft. That's that's the roster we want to make. We're not worried about making an NFL roster, NBA roster. You want to make the you want to be part of your whole body shooting shots team, right? Uh -huh. Okay? Go ahead, brother. Yeah, what you got? The race. I'll just keep it up. All first, right. Yeah, bring it up. First Corinthians yeah, chapter right. nine, verse twenty-four. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all? There you go. But one receiveth the prize. Right, because we always jig up. You know, we talking about, yeah, we want to run this. We know we running this race. Let's get to the finish line. You need to understand why Paul brought this up. Yeah. It's because what did Paul say? Paul taught you that way. You have to be able to adjust to the situation. Your people, you gotta learn about the, your people. The okay. Pulse. The pulse of the people. That's what the pulse of the people. Hey, this time right here, they, you really heavy in sports? Let me learn about the sport. And I know I can use the word, right? And use the word and, and, and use this, this athletic or sport thing and, and, and use that to trick their mind into the truth. And Paul literally said that, that I've tricked you into the truth. He said that in the scriptures. That's why he said, I know, right quick, that's why he said, the word that Paul always used was the word persuade. I always go back to that. I know you're fully persuade. When you look up that word persuade, it goes back to, uh, 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 the sway part means deal, sweeten. Meaning, it's just like, um, uh, meaning I've sweetened this deal unto you. Meaning I made this word nice and sweet so you can bite on it. You know what I'm saying? That's what the word persuade means. Making something so nice and so sweet that the person would have no choice but to fight it. Right? Just want to say, uh, at the end of the Olympic race, uh, win. When you win, you would get an ivory crown. So Paul talked about an incorruptible crown. You know, so everything Paul was talking about was was comparison of the times. You know, uh, agriculture of the uh, earlier times, you know, talked about agriculture and, and the different things. So Paul was just a man of his time, you know, and, and we speak in, in our time, you know, and, and try to convey to the people uh, what it meant then 
as it is now, comparison. Oh, Giving them, you know, very, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, the, uh, the common denominator type speech. Yeah. You know, so everyone can understand. And they, get on, us, they get on us for bringing examples out of movies and stuff like that. Right, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're using what we got to, to but with the scriptures yep. to give you a picture. Yep. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, what's that, what's that, um, uh, the hidden man of uh, peace set? Revelation. Like Corinthians. No, oh, no, no. Uh, yeah, oh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, with the white stone. That's at the end. He that overcome him. Yeah, what, uh, was 215, 315? Uh, oh, Revelation 217. All right. Revelation 217. Since we're speaking about athletics and sports, <laughs> Just you know, you got it? Got it. This is Revelation 2 and 17. All right. He that have an ear, let him hear. Right. With the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat. To him that overcometh, so you overcome what? The deeds of the wicked, stand righteous, endure to the end. Right. Eat of the hidden manna. Hidden manna, right. And we'll give him a white stone. And we'll give him a white stone. Go ahead. And in the stone a new name written. Right. Which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Right. Now, when you go into that, that, that hidden manner, it's talking about complete understanding of the truth, the 100% truth in the, in the kingdom. Right. Now. says I would give him a white stone. Now, the white stone, you can see, you already know, we spoke about the white stone, right? The white stone is, is the white stone is the yum, all right? In, in the Hebrew, um, a wayum, meaning lights. Now, the white stone, remember, the white stone meant what? The white stone, which is the yum, meant acquitted. That's what the white stone meant. The, 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 the yum and the thumb, the yum meant acquitted. So, the Lord said, he that overcame, he, he that overcomes, or endure to the end, he's going to receive a white stone, the spiritual, meaning he's going to be acquitted of what? His sins. Because remember, the day of doom is the day of the law. That's when the law is established and every sinner found under the law will be put to death. But if, you are not, but if you're not a sinner, to, for you to not be a sinner under the law, you have to be under Yahweh Shah, meaning you have to overcome and wait faithfully into you, I was shot. So the ones of us that overcome, we're gonna be acquitted from our sins because y'all was shot down for us. So therefore, we're not gonna be destroyed. So he said, I would give you a, a white stone and within that stone, it says what? It's, it's, it's written a name, which nobody knows. That name, really, it's not a new name. That name is the name that Yahweh shot gave you when he first made you. Yeah. But the thing is, because of the process of coming down and living these 12,000 years of Genesis of Revelation, we was going to lose that name. Yep. But we was going to regain that name when we got back to Yahweh Shem. When that crowning ceremony, that whole thing, the names are going to be, that name is going to be given back to us. Yahweh yeah, Shem had many names when he came down in different incarnations. That's right. But he ultimately came down and got his name again. That's right, Yahweh Shem. Yahweh Shem. That's right, which, that goes back to being the first, remember? One, when we said one of the first, he's the first. He got his real name back, yep. right? Because, you know, his name is not, uh, what's it, Shalomar, because he came in as Solomon, right? But that was one of the names 